Affairs of Italy, Rome. The following script was taken from The Present State of Europe, or The Historical and Political Mercury, Volume 11 to 12, 1700 to 1701, pages 6 to 12. The last letters from Rome assure us that the Pope's fever had left him for some days, that he had sat down to table as usually, that he walked about in his chamber, and that he had given several audiences to his ministers. If this be confirmed, and continue, there will be sufficient to convince those who believe not the miracles of the Church of Rome. For I hold this to be one of the greatest among all the rest, to see a man at the age of above fourscore and five years, escape, a sickness of above forty days, in which he had to combat the terrible pains of a gout and rheumatism, accompanied with a violent fever. And now we are coming to the business of the Grand Jubilee, which is at present the discourse of all Europe. And first we meet with a preparatory bull, a very pleasant contrivance of former popes, to the end that Rome may not fall to be well filled during the full term of the Holy Fair. For by this bull His Holiness suspends the virtue of all pardons and indulgences that ever were granted before upon any occasion whatever, those only accepted which shall be granted this year, as the reader may see by the following abstract. Innocent, Bishop, Servant of the Servants of God, in perpetual memory of the thing. Whereas we have sometime since proclaimed to all Christian people, by the consent of our venerable brethren, the Cardinals of the Holy Roman Church, the celebration of the Holy Jubilee, which is to begin from the next vigils of the Nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, and which is to last to the end of the following year, and whereas we have granted to all the faithful of both sexes, truly penitent, and who shall, after they have confessed, visit the churches of the blessed apostles, St. Peter, and St. Paul, St. John de Lotterano, and Santa Maria Majori at Rome, full indulgence, pardon, and remission of their sins, and see. Now therefore, desirous that all Christian nations, from all parts of the earth, being assembled in our good city, in the unity of the faith and religion, may, during the jubilee, visit and frequent the churches above named, with the same spirit of piety and devotion, and with as numerous a concourse as possible, excited by the example of several Roman pontiffs our predecessors, of our own authority, and full apostolic power, and with the advice and consent of our said brethren, we suspend, and declare suspended, all and all manner of indulgences, as well perpetual, as others, pardons of sins indultos, and permissions to absolve, and see, granted to all churches, monetaries, orders, and see, chaplets, rosaries, images, and see, as well in general as particular, by all or any of the Roman pontiffs our predecessors, or by ourselves, at the request of emperors, kings, dukes, and see, or to the emperor, kings, dukes, and see, and all other persons whatever, either ecclesiastic or secular, for any causes, or upon any occasion whatever. We also cancel and annul whatever may be attempted to the contrary, by any one whatever, knowingly or ignorantly. For which reason, by virtue of our apostolic authority, we command, enjoin, and forbid, under penalty of excommunication ipso facto, the publishing or using any other indulgences, in public or private, under any pretense, or in any place or country whatever, but those of the present jubilee, all constitutions, orders, apostolic ordinances, exemptions, privileges or customs, granted to churches, monasteries, brotherhoods, and see, notwithstanding. And if anyone shall presume to disobey these our commands, let him know that he shall incur the indignation of Almighty God, and the blessed apostles, St. Peter and St. Paul. Given at Rome. June 4. 1699. And now all things being ready, and the time drawing near, the Pope was extremely desirous to have performed the functions of opening the sacred door, but his infirmity not permitting him, after several congregations held, several claims, and several disputes, between Cardinal Carpegna, as Cardinal Vicar, Cardinal Barberini, as Archpriest of the Cathedral of St. Peter's, and Cardinal Bouillon, as Sub-Dean of the Sacred College, the last of all carried it from the rest, in the absence of Cardinal Chibo, Dean of the Sacred College, and it was farther concluded, 
that the three cardinal legates should open the doors of the three other churches, St. Paul's, St. John's, and Sanita Maria Majori. We shall here give the reader a short account of the ceremony itself and what has been usually practiced upon this occasion. The popes were wont to settle the grand jubilee by a bull, which was published upon Ascension Day, in the porch of St. Peter's Church, during the celebrating of High Mass, and before the credo or offertory, this was the method that Urban VIII observed in the year 1624. Two chairs were set up, and handsomely adorned, in the porch aforesaid, and the Pope, repairing thither betimes in the morning, commanded Austin Durando to read the bull for the Jubilee, in the presence of some clerks of the Apostolic Chamber, officers of the penitentiary, and other persons, but neither the cardinals nor the canons of St. Peter were there. The Sunday following, the same bull was read in the three other churches, and afterwards set up in the four principal parts of Rome, and the bull was in Italian, that everybody might read it. This done, letters or briefs were sent to all patriarchs, primates, archbishops, bishops, and c. to the end they might publish the same in all places under their jurisdiction. The solemnity of the holy year begins upon the eve of the Nativity of Christ, with the opening of the holy gates, of which the chiefest is that of St. Peter's, which is always closed and walled up, but only during the year of the Grand Jubilee. And this is the gate which is honoured with the Pope's performance, and therefore, by way of excellency, is called the Holy Gate. Upon the day before mentioned, which is always the 24th of December, all the doors of the four greater churches are shut up by the Pope's order, that no body may enter, and they remain thus shut till the afternoon, within an hour of Vespers, at what time there is a solemn procession, composed of the ambassadors, magistrates of the city, minor penitentiaries, prelates in town, chapters, fraternities, Roman clergy, the sacred college, and the Pope himself having his cope or pluvial on. The cardinals also and prelates are all clad in their sacred ornaments, and all following the cross, which is carried, before they proceed, to the chapel of the apostolic palace, where the venerable is exposed. The Pope falls upon his knees and prays, while certain officers kindle the flambeaux which the cardinals are to carry at that time, in sign of joy, and as an emblem of the martyrs, who by the horrible persecutions which they suffered, became as wax melted in the fire. The Pope having prayed, puts incense in the censer, and perfumes the sacrament, after which, he begins the hymn Veni Creator Spiritus, which is then sung by the whole choir, with an intention to represent the fathers in limbo, from whence they cried, Rorate celt de super, and nubes pluent justum shed down your dew, O heavens, and rain ye clouds upon the just, exod. 45. This procession, thus ordered, proceeds to the holy gate, and the sovereign pontiff follows it, carried in a chair to the holy gate, which he finds closed and walled up. Then he alights, and taking a lighted taper in his hand, he rests himself a while in another chair, which is ready prepared for him, and which is raised three steps. Which done, he comes down from that chair, and taking a golden hammer in his hand, made only for this ceremony, he advances toward the holy gate, and gives three knocks with the hammer, singing the following verses three times, to which the choir sing the responsories. Verses. Open to me the gates of justice. Responsories. Entering in, I will praise the Lord. Verses. I will enter into thy house, O Lord. Responsories. I will worship at thy holy temple, in thy fear. Verses. Open the gates, for the Lord is with us. Responsories. Who has showed strength in Israel. The Pope returning to his chair, says aloud. Verses. Lord hear our prayer. Responsories. And let our cry come unto thee. And the very instant that the Pope goes back to his chair, the masons break down the wall, that closed up the door, and carry away the materials, during which, the Pope goes on. Verses. The Lord be with you. Responsories. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Actions nostras quisumus domine, and see. At the end of which, the choir sing the anthem, jubilate, Deo omnis terra, servite domino in Letitia, and see. In the meantime, the people carry away the smallest bits of the materials beaten down, 
and clear the place, and the penitentiaries, in their sacerdotal ornaments, wash the lintels, posts, and threshold of the sacred door with holy water, which being done before the pontiff enters, he goes on thus. Verses. This is the day which the Lord has made. Responsories. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Verses. Blessed are thy people, O Lord. Responsories. Who has made them to rejoice? Verses. This is the gate of the Lord. Responsories. The just shall enter through it. Verses. Lord hear our prayer. Responsories. And let our cry come unto thee. Verses. The Lord be with you. Responsories. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Lord. Who by thy servant Moses didst ordain for thy people the Israelites a year of jubilee and remission, vouchsafe to us, who have the honor to be thy servants, that through thy goodness we may happily commence this year of jubilee, instituted by thy authority, for which thou hast been pleased that we should solemnly open this door to thy people, to the end they may enter through it, to pour forth their prayers in the presence of thy divine majesty. And that so, during this year, having obtained a full and entire indulgence and pardon of all our sins, when the day of our departure out of this world shall happen, we may be conducted, by an effect of thy mercy, to the enjoyment of thy celestial glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This prayer being said, the Pope takes a cross in his hands, and falling upon his knees in the holy door, tones the Te Deum, and so enters upon his knees, while the choir goes on with the rest of the anthem. No sooner has he passed the door, but the bearers of his chair, clad in red, take him up in that which is prepared for him, and carry him to the altar of St. Peter's Church, where he alights, and prays before the sacrament which is exposed. Which done, he ascends a throne, and begins the Vespers usually sung upon Christmas Day. The same day, and at the same hour, the Pope deputes three cardinal legates to open the other holy doors before mentioned, which they do with the same ceremonies and prayers, as we have already rehearsed. These doors remain open during the whole year, and all people are permitted to enter through them at any hour of the day, but they must not return through them till the time and day appointed for their being closed up, which is done after the following manner. The jubilee beginning upon Christmas Eve, ends also upon that day twelve month, and to the end that no body may be ignorant of the time, there is a new bull or declaration published some days before, to give notice of it. The day being come, there is a procession like to that already described, which proceeds from the Apostolic Palace to St. Peter's Church, where, after they have spent some time in praying before the sacrament, vespers are sung, after which, three cardinals receive the Pope's benediction, and ride, by way of a carvacade, to perform the duty of closing up the same gates which they opened. In the meantime, the Pope, and all the cardinals that are with him, take lighted tapers, to signify, that although the holy year be at an end, yet the faith ought not to suffer any diminution, and then the Pope having seated himself under a canopy, in his chair, he is carried before the chapel, where the venerable is laid up. There he returns his thanks, and worships the sacred face imprinted in the napkin called Veronica, and the iron of the lance that pierced our Saviour's side. After these adorations, the sovereign pontiff tones an old anthem, beginning come jucunditate, which the choir continues, and adds the psalm, unless the Lord out build the house, during which, the whole procession draws near the holy door, where prayers being ended, the Pope, who stands upon his feet under the canopy, turns toward the door, his mitre being off, and holding a burning taper in his hand, blesses the materials which are prepared to stop up the door. The words made use of are these. Verses. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Responsories. Who made heaven and earth. Verses. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Responsories. Both now and for evermore. Verses. The stone which the builders refused. Responsories. Is become the chief corner stone. Verses. Lord hear our prayer. Responsories. And let our cry come unto thee. Verses. The Lord be with us. Responsories. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Most High God, who preserves the highest, the middlemost, and the lowest, 
who sanctifiest every creature by thy inward operations, bless these creatures of stone, lime, and sand, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This said, the Pope, the clergy, and all the people present at this ceremony, depart through the holy gate, and after the church is cleared, the Pope casts holy water upon the materials, perfumes them, and having put on his mitre again, girds himself with a white linen apron. Then the grand penitentiary presents him with a trowel of gold or silver gilt, with which he takes mortar out of a hod, which is carried by the master of the ceremonies. This mortar he spreads upon the lower part of the door, so that the place is covered all over, upon which he puts several medals of gold and silver, variously stamped, and having several mottos, over which he lays three stones, well squared, and all this while that he is at work, he utters the following words, with a low, but intelligible voice. In the faith, and by the strength of Jesus Christ, the living God, who said to the Prince of the Apostles, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock will I build my church, we lay this first and principal stone, toward the closing up of that gate which is not to be opened any more till the next year of Jubilee. In the name of the Father, and see. The Pope having ranged and cemented those three stones, the Master Mason draws a line, and after he has prepared everything ready for his purpose, the Grand Penitentiary, taking a silver trowel, lays one stone upon those which the Holy Father had laid before, wherein he is assisted by the other penitentiaries, to show that they are all the Pope's coadjutors, in the administration of the Sacrament of Repentance. Thus they raise the wall to a considerable height, while the choir sings Celestis Herbs Jerusalem, and C. Which anthem being ended, the Sovereign Pontiff having washed his hands, goes on. Verses. Lord save thy people. Responsories. And bless thine inheritance. Verses. Let thy mercy be upon us. Responsories. As we have trusted in thee. Verses. Lord, send us help from thy sanctuary. Responsories. And defend us out of Sion. Verses. Lord hear our prayer. Responsories. And let our cry come unto thee. Verses. The Lord be with us. Responsories. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, who in every part of thy dominion art mild and merciful, hear us, we beseech thee, and grant that the sanctification of this place may endure inviolable, and that all the faithful may rejoice in having obtained the benefits of thy favour during this year of Jubilee, through Jesus Christ, and C. Prayers being ended, the pontiff returns to his throne, and while twelve masons, six on the one side, and six on the other, are stopping up the door, the choir sings the anthems, Louder Jerusalem Dominum, and C. Litatus, some in his, and C. At last, the work being ended, the sovereign pontiff gives his benediction, with full indulgence, to all that are present, who return him acclamations of joy for his blessing, with all sorts of vows and wishes for the prosperity of his holiness. Whether all these punctilios in the ceremony, which by this time has no doubt already been performed, were observed, what additions, or what abatements have been made, we shall be better informed by the next. In the meantime, there are some who verily believe that the Duke of Berwick, natural son to the late King James, is one of the two whom His Holiness reserves in petto for the last objects of his favour, the retirement of that young nobleman, and his application to the study of theology, giving an occasion to that conjecture. And indeed, should such a thing happen, it would not be so great a wonder, perhaps, as the promotion of Father Gabrielli to the Cardinal's cap. For he being appointed one of the examiners of the Archbishop of Cambrai's book, was one of that prelate's most zealous favourers, and one that used all his endeavours to prevent the condemnation of the said book, yet the Pope made him a cardinal, and has allowed him a pension, being poor, to support his dignity. All this while, the concourse to Rome is greater than was expected. They talk of above thirty thousand already, and because the Germans make the most numerous part, and arrive in shoals in Illinois, at a time when the two courts of Rome and Vienna are at variance, some there were who put it into the Pope's head, as if the Emperor designed to lay hold of this opportunity to bring soldiers into Italy, under the disguise of pilgrims, and this ground of terror was discussed a long time in a congregation, till they were ashamed of their own fears.